And the Lord said to Moses, This shall be a law of the leper on the day when he is to be pronounced clean. He shall be brought to the priest at a meeting place outside the camp. The priest shall go out of the camp to meet him, and he shall examine him. And if he dis disease is healed, and if the disease is healed in the leper, then the priest shall command to take for him who is to be cleansed two living clean birds, cedar wood and scarlet material and hyssop. And the priest shall command to kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over the fresh running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, the cedar wood and the scarlet material and the high sup and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle the blood on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let go the living bird into the open field. He who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes shave off his hair and bathe himself in water, and he shall be clean. After that, he shall come into the camp, but stay outside his tent seven days. But on the seventh day, he shall shave all his hair off, his head, his beard, his eyebrows, and his body, and shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water and be clean. On the eighth day, he shall take two he lambs without blemish and one Ooh, lamb, a year old without blemish, and three tenths of an emp of fine flour for a cereal offering, mixed with oil and one log of oil. And the priest who cleanses him shall set the man who is to be cleansed, and these things before the Lord at the door of the tent of meeting. The priest shall take one of the male lambs and offer it for a guilt or trespass offering and the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. He shall kill the lamb in the place where they kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the sacred place, the court of the tabernacle. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the guilt or trespass offering. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt or trespass offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the great toe of his right foot, on the blood of the guilt or trespass offering, which he has previously placed in each of these places. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him who is to be cleansed, and make atonement for him before the Lord." And the priest shall offer the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanliness and afterward kill the burnt offering, is a vi which is a victim. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the cereal offering on the altar, and he shall make atonement for him and he shall be clean. If the cleansed leper is poor and cannot afford so much, he shall take one lamb for a guilt or trespass offering to be waived to make atonement for him, and one tenth of an emp of fine flour mixed with oil for a cereal offering and a log of oil, and two turtle doves or two young pigeons, such as he can afford, one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. He shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing, and the priest at the door of the tent of meeting before the Lord, and the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt or trespass offering and the law of the oil, and shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord, and he shall kill the lamb of the guilt or trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb 
of his right hand and on the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest and shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. The priest shall put some of the oil in his hand on the tip of the right ear of the one to be cleansed and on the thumb of his right hand and on the great toe of his right foot and on the place where he has put the blood of the guilt offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed and make atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer one of the turtle doves or of the young pigeons such as he is able to get as he can afford one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering together with the cereal offering and the priest shall make atonement for him who is to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of him in whom is the plague of leprosy who is not able to get what is required for his cleansing. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when you have come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the disease of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, then he who owns the house shall come and tell the priest, it seems to me there is some sort of disease in my house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before he goes in to examine the disease so that all that is in the house may not be declared unclean. Afterward, he shall go in to see the house. He shall examine the disease and it is in the walls of the house with depressed spots of dark green or dark red appearing beneath the surface of the wall. Then the priest shall go out of the door and shut the house seven days. The priest shall come again on the seventh day and shall look. And if the disease has spread in the walls of the house, he shall command that they take out the diseased stones, cast them into unclean place outside the city. He shall cause the house to be scraped within, round about, and the plaster or mortar that is scraped off to be emptied out in an unclean place outside the city. And they shall put other stone in the place of those stones, and he shall plaster the house with fresh mortar. If the disease returns breaking out in the house after he has removed the stones he has scraped and plastered the house, then the priest shall come and look. And if the disease is spreading in the house, it is a rotting or a corroding leprosy in the house. It is unclean. He shall tear down the house, its stones, its timber, and all the plaster or mortar of the house and shall carry them forth out of the city to an unclean place. Moreover, he who enters the house during the whole time that, is, that it is shut up shall be unclean until the evening. He who lies down or eats in the house shall wash his clothes. But if the priest inspects it and the disease has not spread, after the house was plastered, he shall pronounce the house clean because the disease is healed. He shall take to cleanse the house two birds cedar wood, scarlet material, and hyssop, and he shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water, and he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet material and the living bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, the running water, the living bird, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet material, but he shall let the living bird go out of the city into an open field, so he shall make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law for all kinds of leprous diseases and mange-like conditions, for the leprosy of a garment or of a house, for a swelling or an eruption or a scab or a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. It reminds me of Chinese drywall. When we get it, here in South Florida, there was many homes built at a certain date and they had Chinese drywall. And what it does is it attacks the electrical wires and so it erodes. 
So it has to all be taken out, even the elect, um, the um, electronics have to be taken out. Everything has to be scraped out almost to, to, to put a new wall, like a new wall and redone. So it's a big deal. So this is what it reminds me of. And then the other thing is Jesus came and he dipped, his blood was dipped and he took the lashes, he took the, the pain, the lashes on the cross and the pain and he took the suffering and the dying on the cross for us so that we would have forgiveness and healing and deliverance. But here, there was this, um, there was a sequence to go through. Okay, chapter 15. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, say to the Israelites, when any man has a running discharge from his body because of his discharge, he is unclean. This shall be the law concerning his uncleanliness in his discharge. Whether his body runs with his discharge or has stopped running, it is uncleanliness in him. Every bed on which the one has the discharge lies is unclean and everything on which he sits shall be unclean. Whoever touches that person's bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And whoever sits on anything on which he who has the discharge has sat shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. He who touches the flesh of him who has the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And any saddle on which he who has the discharge rides shall be unclean. Whoever touches anything that has been under him shall be unclean until evening. He who carries these things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. Whoever he Whomever he who has the discharge touches without rinsing his hands in water shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. The earthen vessel that he with the discharge touches shall be broken and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. When he who has a discharge is cleansed of it, he shall count seven days for his purification, then wash his clothes, bathe in running water, and be clean." On the eighth day, he shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons and come before the Lord to the door of the tent of meeting and give them to the priest. And the priest shall offer them one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And he shall make atonement for the man before the Lord for his discharge. And if any man has a discharge of semen, he shall wash all his body in water and be unclean until evening. And every garment and every skin on which the sperm comes shall be washed with water and be unclean until evening. The woman also with whom a man with a mission of semen shall lie, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until evening. And if a woman has a discharge, her regular discharge of blood of her body, she shall in, be in impurity or separation for seven days, and whoever touches her shall be cleansed until evening. And everything that she lies on in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sits on shall be unclean. And whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. Whoever touches anything she sat on, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And if her flow has stained her bed or anything on which she sat, when he touches it, he shall be unclean till evening. And if any man lie with her and her impurity be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. And if a woman has an issue of blood for many days, not during the time of her separation, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her regular impurity, all the days of the issue of her uncleanliness, she shall be as in the days of her impurity, she shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge shall be as the bed of her impurity and whatever she sits on shall be unclean as in her impurity. And whoever touches 
those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean till evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall wait seven days and after that she shall be clean. On the seventh or the eighth day, she shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them to the priest at the door of the tent of meeting. He shall offer one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And he shall make atonement for her before the Lord for her unclean, unclean discharge. Thus you shall separate the Israelite from their uncleanliness, lest they die in their uncleanliness by defiling my tabernacle that is in the midst of them. This is the law for him who has a discharge and for him who has an emission of sperm being made unclean by it. And for her who is sick with her impurity and for any person who has a discharge, whether man or woman, and for him who lies with her who is unclean. So that was 14 and 15. So all that is back then there wasn't, they, they didn't clean like we do nowadays. Every day we can take showers and clean up. And back then they didn't have that. So there was a uncleanliness. And so with the woman with the with her period and stuff, there was a time of uncleanliness. And um, as well with the man, as well as the, the time together intimately. So what, what, what I see now is Jesus. He has come and he's redeemed us. He's taken away the sin and the guilt by us coming to him. He's taken away the uncleanliness and he's purified us with his blood. And his blood covers us and sanctifies us. And it is important, though, to keep clean and to keep our bodies clean and healthy. And um, I'm going to read to you the, what the, the 15 and 16 said on, on my other Bible here. It's important that we, of course, keep ourselves clean anyway. Like we did yesterday, we're learning in Leviticus, there's a lot of things that are true that we need to continue to go by so we keep clean, like right now, keeping clean. But as far as Jesus, when he came, he died and rose again. And that doesn't mean we can't be clean physically, but we need to wash ourselves. We need to be sanitary and take care of ourselves, take showers and bathe, use soap and do it daily. And we need to take care of our, our teeth, our hair, our bodies, but, and we need to clean our clothes and our beds and stuff. But we need to be led by the Spirit in everything we do. We're led by the Spirit and we're just we just normally do these things. We don't need to be under condemnation. We just need to walk in what God has given us, the blessings. He's given most of us right now. Year, these years, we live in homes. We live in, there's, there's laundry we can do right in our home. Most people have. And, and there's places you can go to do laundry too. So it's like we got to just keep clean. We got to keep take in showers and keep clean but also thank you lord that he has delivered us he's healed us he's saved us by his blood he's poured it out to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and now it takes a minute and we turn and we go that way and we repent of the sin in the past and we go forward and let god be god and he shows us things so we just pray for wisdom now that we just have wisdom in the things that we do wisdom to do everything and faith and walking in faith doing it by the spirit of spirit of god and the wisdom that he gives us obedience and wisdom from god will bring us to the places that we need to be and doing the things we need to do even these simple things and it says in the structure cleansing from infectious skin and disease this is how you cleanse from infectious skin and disease that was in 14 and, in, and cleansing from mildew also, which reminded me of the Chinese wall, um, drywall, and the way they actually take it out is they actually treat it like a, a, like a, um, like a disease or like a um, toxic, and they take it out little by little, and they, they deal with it a certain way and put it in a, I don't know if, how they do it exactly, but I know my husband said that they do remove it, remove the house little by little, and they do it as it's a toxic thing. So, and then this is discharges against uncleanliness. 
So learning about uncleanliness, being unclean, uncleanly, just like food, the same thing. We were learning about food. You can't, you can't pick up something that's been laying in the road and believe that you're gonna be okay eating it. It's not gonna happen. And things that you know you shouldn't be eating. Um, or um, like this, you know, we do need to clean ourselves. We need to take showers, we need to do laundry, we need to wash our tables, we need to sanitize our floors and especially for our babies so they're, you know, natural, even getting some natural, um, you know, seventh generation is what I like to use, but natural things. So if you have a baby and they're on the floor, they're not getting toxins when they're crawling around or, but you wanna keep things clean even for your pets so they can stay long and healthy and strong. So you can stay long and healthy and strong. So your babies can stay long, healthy and strong. You take showers, you wash yourself, you, you keep clean, you keep your showers clean, you keep things clean. And we all can do that no matter where we live. And I just speak blessing over you and, and just wisdom for God to give you wisdom and prosperity in everything you do, that you have wisdom and faith in Jesus' name and just receive from the Lord this simple message. And we love you and I pray your words make, remember your words are your way to victory and I pray your words speak life and that your your actions will follow what you're saying because what you're saying is what you're gonna do. So bless you, see you tomorrow on Portunate.